coming to you from Jezero Crater on the surface of Mars. This is Mr. C. Tuesday, my friends, in seventh grade, I want to show you this right off the bat. And if you look closely, there are four earthquakes that have occurred in the last hour in the United States. Notice out on the big island of Hawaii, magma's moving under Kilauea volcano. So do you see that? It's almost always what those earthquakes are under the big island. Magma moving under the volcano. Up in Alaska, on the Denali Fault, a small earthquake, it's not big. You see the one um, up off uh, maybe Washington? Again, not a big one. And then you can see the one near El Paso, Texas. Now, I don't know exactly what that is, El Paso, Texas. Is there any fault right there by El Paso? Not that we can see. So anyway, remember 10 points for the USGS website. The big earthquake zones, I'll ask you on Friday. Ring of fire. And then out there in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. You're going to need to give me those two. Those are the two biggies. So anyway, earthquake zones. I am so excited. I, you know, fired up about teaching earthquakes, and that's what we've got going right now, earthquakes. So that'll be a part of your test on Friday, earthquakes. And then after Friday, only two more. So pretty cool on the 7th of May and the 14th of May. So anyway, uh, if you show a parent of the USGS website, get a parent signature, explain to them the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, the Ring of Fire, and show some earthquakes. If you've got any red ones, tell them they're in the last hour. The orange ones are in the last 24. The big earthquakes in the world occur on those faults, those big fault zones. Uh, that you see. And the really big ones occur on the subduction zones where one plate dives down under another one. And I'm going to show you some proof of that in a little bit. Well, I've got to hurry because I have two special guests. I've got a four minute video. How am I going to get all this in? I'm going to have to hustle. So to squeeze all of this in. Of course your journal's out and your LP. Now I don't care where you write this. You've got homework that your name, date, and period's going on right now. And then you're going to check to see that if you have this right. It's too late to get this sorted out. You're just going to hand it in as is. If it's not ready to come in tomorrow, turn it in tomorrow for 75%. Or on Wednesday for 70% and then after that it drops to 60%. So you want to you know get this in ASAP, A S A P as soon as possible. Okay, hurry Mr. C, 4 minutes already. Wow. Well, there are three kinds of seismic or earthquake waves, right? There are P waves. The P waves are the primary waves. When you were in primary school, um, by the way, when you see me rubbing my nose, please don't report to my parents, my parents, your parents, that I'm picking my nose regularly on my videos. I'm just rubbing the outside of my nose. So don't tell them that or your nose, whoop, you'll get a massive Pinocchio out of the deal. So anyway, P waves, and what do they do? They squeeze the land, it's like an accordion. Burp, 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 burp. So they'll, if you're up above at the epicenter on the surface, you'll get that kind of motion from the P waves. Boop, 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 boop. 
moving in, moving back, moving in, moving back, P waves, and then you get the S waves, the secondary waves, and they move from side to side. I'm going to show you some S waves at work in a little bit in Japan on some tall buildings. And then, so the P waves, the primary waves, the first earthquake waves to make it to a location. And then, you know, the rocks break underground and then the waves go out from there to the surface. The S waves, the secondary waves, side to side motion. And then the surface waves, and the surface waves roll like this. Now, when we were in Japan, when I was a little boy, five or six, maybe seven, I remember my dad reporting an earthquake that we had had um, that he said it felt like a whale swam under the house. So that would be the surface waves that were rolling. I wish I would have felt that, but I didn't. So anyway, here's your homework right here. Read page 114, 115, and then explain the difference between um, the modified, um, well, I'll give you the exact name of it. What is the exact name? Um, the moment magnitude scale on 115, and then the Richter scale. So explain the difference between the two. We don't use the Richter scale much anymore. And think about what's the difference between a 4 or a 5 on the moment magnitude scale, or like an 8 or a 9. Now, a 1 or 2 or a 3 aren't big earthquakes. They're small. A 4, medium small. A 5, still medium small. A 6, medium, 7, medium large, eight large, nine is a massive earthquake, a nine. So anyway, I want to tell you really quick, so you got the P waves, the S waves, the secondary waves, and the surface waves. So and that was what your homework was about. Your test, you've got to use a note card, or you've got to do really well. If you don't have a note card and don't do well, you'll be redoing and I told you before, it'll be a pain. So topics, Psalm 19.1, see that? Worth two points on your verse sheet. Heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Psalm 19.1. It means the creation glorifies God, shows off God. Everything He made shows Him off. Constellations. I've got the constellations for you. Here they are, worth 15 points, but I'll ask you, what's a constellation? It's just a group of stars that appear to be something ordinary on the Earth. In this case, a cross, or a warrior who's got a bow, we can't see that anymore. And then the belt stars point down to the brightest star, Sirius. So that's in the high in the west right now. We're about ready to lose it. And then you've got the Big Dipper. These are worth 15 points. The Big Dipper's overhead. And it's um, tail stars, handle stars, the arc. Follow the arc to, to Arcturus, the number four brightest star. And then the outside stars point up to the north. The handle points to the east to Arcturus. The two on the dipper, the cup, point north to Polaris. Not very bright, but, it, but it's over the North Pole, over the Arctic. So you've got all of that. So. And then you have a super moon the next couple of nights. Here's why. Because the moon is an ellipse. The moon has an elliptical orbit around the Earth. So I wanted to show you this really quick. 
my two visiting guests, Mr. Moonhead, Mr. Moonhead, and Mr. Earth. And here's what happens. Mr. Moonhead travels around the Earth in an elliptical orbit, a flattened orbit. So some of the time it's closer, like right there, it's closer to the Earth than when it's here or here. It's closer here. So at those two places where it's closer in its flattened circle, we get a supermoon. So supermoon tonight, but it might be cloudy. And it'll be close to a supermoon, a waning gibbous. Uh, on Wednesday night. Anyway, have a look. So, stuff on the test. What else? Oh, hurry, hurry, hurry. What else is on the test? So, Earth Day. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about Earth Day. Um, in the Bible, what does it say that God told Adam and Eve? What's the Hebrew word? The Hebrew word means take care of it or preserve it, our word conserve it. And I'm going to ask you for two things you can do to take care of the earth. Now you can't personally take care of the water, the ocean. You can't. One day you might, you know, who knows, you might be able to be personally involved with cleaning up the ocean. Who knows? God might have you do that. Or the air, the air quality. So, by the way, we can only clean up our air, and some politicians want us to pay to clean up the air all over the earth. When, for instance, China doesn't have to clean up their air or other places. But some politicians want us to single-handedly or mostly handedly do it. Not fair, not right. So, anyway, just saying. Then there's proteins. Proteins are made of amino acids. The chance for one protein to form all by itself. And this will probably be a bonus question. 1 over 10 to the 164. The probability of one protein, 154, 150 amino acids, forming all by itself. 1 over 10 to the 164th. A 1 over a fraction with 164 zeros behind it. Not happen, ever going to happen by itself. So, amino acids are building blocks of proteins. What do proteins do? Everything in your body. So I'll ask you about that. Hey, the Mars helicopter, um, what's its job? To fly, just without crashing. And to take pictures from up above Mars. That's it. Hey, a question about Laura's latest uh, video section. What she told you is you can do anything you attempt to do. If you work hard at it and practice a lot at it, you'll get better at it. You might not get great at it, but you'll get better at it. So I'll ask you about that. I've already mentioned the supermoon. So minerals, I'm going to ask you about the minerals from your mineral chart. So study these, put them on your note card, put all this stuff on your note card. So study the 20, numbers 1 through 20. Like which one is the major mineral in the Earth's continents? Which one? That would be granite. Which one is the major one um, in the crust under the ocean? That would be basalt at the bottom of the ocean basalt at the bottom. Anyway, so look over those. And then earthquakes. So some things about earthquakes. What do you got for us? I've got this. Let's see if I've got it. I hope I do. Yeah. I'm going to ask you this. What do we call the place underneath the ground, the surface? Do you see Mr. C up there? Earthquakes are cold occurring. He's holding on to his hat. You see him there? He's right by the epicenter where the earthquake waves reach the crust, the top of the crust, the surface. 
He's freaking out there. That's the epicenter. Now, if you look underground, where the um, earthquake occurs underground is called the focus. You know how you can remember? It's underground. It starts with the letter U. Look at focus. It's got a U in it. The focus is the place underground where the rock breaks. So tomorrow I'm going to show you exactly um, or try to give you a model of how earthquakes happen. So anyway, epicenter on the surface and the focus underneath where the rock first breaks. <coughs> it breaks and then the earthquake waves start flowing out. So anyway, I'll be asking you about that. So now I'm going to try to give you semester exam questions every day. So here's two semester exam questions that will be on your semester exam. Two evidences for the great global flood. How about just go with sedimentary rock formed by the great global flood. And how about fossils of humans, animals, and plants. Coal under every continent oil under every continent, animal fossils under every continent. I think there was a great global flood that buried them. Uh-huh. Charles Lyell got it all wrong and he knew it. He just, you know, fake news, fake science. Charles Lyell, 150 years ago. So he's got the right story now. He's got it right. Okay, um, I want to show you a few earthquake videos and pictures. So, I think you'll find this pretty fascinating. So you're going to have to be patient with me. Oh, I can tell you're being patient. Way to go. And let's see what I've got for you. Okay, I already showed you those earthquakes. Now I want to show you this. See if I can get this up. Ah, oh, there we go. These are the largest earthquakes that have ever happened on the Earth's surface. The five largest and their moment magnitude scale. Have a look at these. The biggest one was off of Chile in 1960. It was a 9.5 on the moment magnitude scale. The second biggest was in Alaska in 1964. And the fourth biggest was in Japan in 2011. Um, let me show you this for a minute. Poor Japan. Let's see if I've got this. Look at this. Here's why Japan has such big earthquakes and so many during the year. Wow. Check out Japan. And they've had one in the last 24 hours. If you look carefully at Japan, you see that? Japan has a massive subduction zone fault where the ocean plate goes down under the land plate. And when that breaks, when it slips, you call it, it causes massive earthquakes. That earthquake that you see there in the last 24 hours wasn't a big one. It was only a 4-3. wasn't big. Actually, Japan has like three faults around it. Three. Wow. So, and I want to show you this. See if it will come up. My computer is slow. I don't know why. Let's see if this is going to come up. Check this out. This is an earthquake happening in Japan. Look at the ground shaking. Watch. See it going up and down? 
Probably S wave. Look at that. Going up, going down. Up, down. Now look at this. Sideways movement. Watch. If you look, those light poles are moving. The light poles are moving. Watch the ground shake. Look at this. Watch. Watch it move. Watch the lines. The ground is moving right there. These are aftershocks. Anyway, you get the idea. Okay, watch this. Could you see the ground moving back and forth? And then I want to show you this. Look at these buildings. Watch these buildings. Watch these buildings move sideways. Watch them. See if you can see the buildings actually swaying. Watch. Can you see the buildings doing this? These are high rises. While the earthquake's happening. That would uh, kind of shake your day up, wouldn't it? Okay. So I thought you'd find that kind of interesting. So, and then. How are we doing time-wise? Pretty good. I have a four-minute video to show you of the... Great Alaskan Earthquake, which is the second largest earthquake that was ever registered on a Richter scale, which is, and a seismograph. The seismograph's the instrument, and I should have said moment magnitude scale because the Richter's not used anymore. Anyway, you're going to see um, a short video, four minutes, of the great 1964 Alaskan earthquake, and what what it did. It uh, the ground went up and down it. The ground dropped in some places 10 or more feet. And it shook like jello in some places. So you're going to see evidence of all of this. And um, a little bit later in the week, you're going to see some tsunamis or under ocean earthquakes that generate huge waves. So I'll be showing you that. Okay, it's time to watch this Alaskan earthquake, it was a 9-2 on the moment magnitude scale. Uh, the biggest ever was the 9-5 off of Chile in 1960. So, now, before I show you this, I don't want you to have nightmares tonight and freak out. Are you listening? Arizona is a quiet place as far as earthquakes. We do have earthquakes that occur, but they're small. We don't have any big faults or cracks. So the closest big earthquakes that could occur are on the San Andreas Fault, hundreds of miles away. Well, maybe 200 miles away to the southwest. When there's a bigger earthquake over there, it could actually shake buildings a little bit in downtown Phoenix. Sometimes there are earthquakes to the north. The big, about the biggest ever registered is about a five on the moment magnitude. That's a medium small earthquake. We just don't have big earthquakes in Arizona. Is that okay with you? <laughs> Me too. So I just, I just soon not experience a 9.1 like in Japan or a 9.2 like in Alaska or the 9.5 in Chile. Those super big earthquakes are all 
subduction zone earthquakes. Now I have a question for you. Why can't we get a subduction zone earthquake here in Arizona? Why not? <laughs> Do we have the ocean right off of us? No. Oh, that's the reason. Remember an ocean plate diving down under a land plate. Subduction. We don't have any subduction zone um, zones near us. Whew. That's why Mr. C doesn't have to hold on to his hat. There aren't going to be any big enough ones that are going to cause all of that to happen. So, thank you, Lord. Okay, the 1964 Alaskan earthquake, 9-2 on the moment magnitude scale. So, triple R for your Friday test. You know a lot of the topics and do your homework on those two pages. Mr. Philip, thank you.